Casey Joyner, brought to you by Sun Valley Pool Fan Zone. For your fan cave, check out Sun Valley Pools. A ton against the Panthers, and the Panthers couldn't run the ball at all, but the Panthers threw the ball downfield. You know, Carolina, uh, uh, Newton was very good at hitting passes against the loaded box. The Eagles, they loaded the box 45 times yesterday. It's the second highest total all year. That means they bring an extra defender to the box. You've got, you know, got one more defender that they can block, and it usually means, okay, offense, you have to pass the football because we, we've got the numbers. You can't run it. And Carolina couldn't pass it all against that. But I was surprised that, uh, that, that Philadelphia said, look, we don't care. We're taking the run away at all costs. They sure did that last night. Carolina was absolutely inept running the football last night. They made them pretty one-dimensional. Was that the difference in the game? I think it was. I think that's what they figured. I think they saw some things on tape that said, we, we're going to take the running game away so much that Cam is going to have to throw. And not only that, they were playing loose coverage with their corners. And usually when you're playing loose, it means you're playing man coverage, which you kind of would have to do if you're bringing the safe, one safety down to the box. You maybe can play you know, one deep, but that's about it. And I think they just figured, we don't think you can beat us vertically. You might be able to throw in short passes and things. We've thrown a bunch of short passes to Kevin Mitchell. We can live with that. We think your accuracy is off, and we don't think your deep ball accuracy is good enough. So they challenged Newton to step up, and he didn't. How much faith, then, does Jim Schwartz put into that secondary uh, under that premise? You'd think, you would think uh, if uh, going in that matchup, you'd say, okay, you're going to go ahead and put uh, Mills, and you're going to go and put Russell Douglas, you're going to put those guys in man coverage against Funches, who's done fairly well this year, and Benjamin, who's, he's not he's not quite at like OBJ or A.J. Green or Des Bryant level, but he's at the next tier, you would think, and it didn't matter. Yeah, they put that kind of that kind of faith into them says uh, a, a lot. But, again, I think a lot of it also said we think we're good enough. We may not be dumb, but we think we're good enough, and we think, Cam, that you you are not good enough right now, and you're still a bit rusty, and it showed last night. Uh, I want to go back to the Eagles' rush defense because uh, it wasn't just last night, Casey. Uh, no one's running the ball on this team. Carolina had 25 carries for 80 yards, but a lot of that was Cam Newton taken off. I don't know that the running backs had positive yardage on the ground. In fact, Panthers' running backs combined for just a yard on 13 carries last night, but they have virtually stuffed everybody on the round. How good, uh, on the ground I should say, how good is the Eagles' rush defense? Uh, the bottom team in the league right now in good blocking rate is just over 30%. You know, like good blocking rate is that metric I have that measures run blocking effectiveness. Carolina only had a 31.8% rate last night, and they came into the game ranked 7th in the league in that category. So it's two straight games they played badly. But what stood out to me when I'm looking at the tape was not just that the Eagles had players in the box, but I think this is part of why they've been so good uh, in run defense. The Carolina offense left a lot of players unblocked. And that can be either you've got a defensive lineman taking up two offensive linemen, so linebacker's free, you brought a guy into the box, and now he can be unaccounted for because you get an extra guy. But it also seemed at times that the Carolina linemen didn't know who to block, that the Eagles were in places that the Carolina linemen were not expecting them to be, and it was causing the Eagles players to go free. So when I'm looking at that, I'm going, I haven't had a chance to do a full deep dive analysis, but just at first glance, it's like, okay, that means Schwartz was doing some things. He was throwing some mixers in there that they weren't looking for, and I think that's part why they're doing so well. Casey Joyner, ESPN.com with us. When you see two linebackers combined for 27 tackles, uh, what does that say? I mean, uh, it seems that, for number one, you're tackling pretty good, but it almost seems like you're game planning to make sure that those guys are in place to make the tackles. Yeah, it's, see, it, what you're telling your defensive lineman is we want to – we want to take up two players. I mean, Cox was having a great game last night. My fantasy team only got four points out of him. But what that's, and I, I laugh about that, but what that says is they weren't asking Cox to be a disruptor. They weren't saying one gap and get upfield and go, get, go make the tackles. If you can beat the block, that's fine. Occupy these guys. Make sure that we leave our linebackers free. Make sure we're leaving, you know, we're bringing the extra guy in the box, and now we've got defensive linemen taking up two players. You're never going to get the running game going against that kind of setup. Uh, Bradham last night had a great game. Michael Kendricks was the other guy. You mentioned Fletcher Coxo and what kind of difference maker he was. They played two games without him, and they've been okay. But last night, we talked about this earlier. You won two games without Fletcher, but what did he add last night that maybe gives this defense the look of a team that can make a deep run in the playoffs? You can only do those things I was talking about where Schwartz is trying to set up the defense in such a way to where maybe you're going to confuse the offense. Eventually, teams are going to catch up with that. And when they start catching up with that, you're not going to get those unblocked defenders that are going to be able to just go stuff to run without having to take on a, ta uh, a blocker. So what Cox does is says, okay, look, 
maybe we can't do those things anymore, but now we've got a guy up front who's just going to disrupt, and you're going to have to account for him no matter what. And if you try and single block him, he's going to get upfield. So it gives them the guy that says when the defenses start figuring or the offenses start figuring out all the things that they're doing and start countering them, they now can just say, look, if we can't beat you by fooling you, we can beat you just be straight up with physical talent. Um, I also want to look at, uh, on that defensive side of the ball, the pressure they get from their front four, Graham and Long and Barnett got a sack last night, Jernigan and Fletcher, uh, Vinnie Curry. Um, you look at that you know, defensive front there, and uh, again, it looks like a, a defensive front in today's NFL that has the makings of a team that has the look of a team that can make a run. Yeah, the Eagles only blitzed 14 times last night. That's a solid number, but it's not a huge amount. And they got pressure. Here's the thing. They only got pressure on 13 plays, which out of the 52 passes, which you say, wow, that's not, not very much. But on those plays where they're getting pressure, Cam Newton, five yards per attempt, two interceptions. They also got two sacks in the thir- or on the 15 dropbacks that he had, were, or 13 dropbacks that he had when he was pressured. So he got absolutely nothing done. And even if you're not getting pressure on the other plays, if on the plays where you are getting pressure, you're completely shutting offense down and you're shutting down the running game, you've already taken two big steps to victory. Uh, Casey Joyner is with us. We're looking at the tape from last night's game. Um, give me your assessment of Wentz. I mean, Wentz against... If you watch that game last night and said Wentz or Newton, at the end of the night you had to take a guy. After watching that, who are you taking? I'm without a doubt taking Wentz. And he did it on the road, too. Let's not forget that. He did it on the road against uh, a pretty good defense. Uh, he was only pressured, though. Wentz last night was pressured on 13 plays also, and he didn't do quite that well. But the difference was is he he didn't throw two interceptions when he got pressured and Newton did. And Newton looked – I don't – Newton looked – he, I don't know if it was tired or rusty or what, but he did not, you know, there were two, some of the two-minute scenarios, he was not speeding his offense up to the line of scrimmage. His passes were very inaccurate. That last pass he threw to McCaffrey at the very end of the game, he threw it into the ground instead of throwing it to McCaffrey. Uh, he just it was very inaccurate. So I don't know if it's injury rust or he just didn't handle the short week well. But right now, if I'm the Panthers, I'm going, I don't like the way my quarterback looked, and i got to find other ways to win. What did the Eagle offense do last night that, uh, you know, we thought that they would have some problems against this Carolina defense, but what were they able to do last night against Carolina that enabled them to, you know, they had a good night offensively, wasn't jump off the page good, but 28 points last night. They got a 46.8% good blocking rate. I wouldn't have expected them to be that uh, that good. They only had like 102 yards rushing. So going into it, when I was looking at the tape, I thought, well, okay, they might have hit a couple of plays, but that's about it. They were consistently good at running the ball. They didn't get breakaway runs. They didn't get any huge plays, but they were getting plenty of space. Because remember, in that category, 45% will usually leave the league at the end of a season. So if you're getting that in an individual game, it means you're blocking at an elite level. So they were able to run block quite well. And Again, we questioned last night with some, you know, with, with Lane Johnson. Now, are they going to be able to move the ball on the ground? And they did so with, with at a consistent rate. They did. And uh, last night, they kind of took Ertz out of the game, although we did have the two touchdowns. But there was only two catches. You had Nelson Aguilar with another big night. He hit the touchdown on the slant. Um, and obviously, uh, you had a, a decent game from Nelson Aguilar. I mean, excuse me, um, uh, Alshon Jeffrey. I mean, so it wasn't like somebody was the star last night, and I guess the star becomes Carson Wentz, but his third down conversion rate is just off the charts. But I guess it's because he has a lot of options. I mean, you have a lot of options, and it's not just one guy you can zone in on. That really changes that third down efficiency. Yeah, it does. And that's the thing is that when you can run the ball as well as they did, that was a big plus. And here's the thing. He dropped back the pass, Carson Wentz did last night, uh, versus a blitz. Or when I'm sorry, when the, when, the, when the Panthers did not blitz, he dropped back 11 times. He was 9 of 11 for 100 yards and two touchdowns. That's 11.2 yards per attempt. So when he dropped back and Carolina didn't send somebody after him, he was really destroying them. And I think that says something about that running game, too, is that they were, they were able to keep the running game going well enough to where Carolina would have some instances where they said, we can't just concentrate on Wentz. We have to get this running game stopped. And when they did that, that's when he was able to go to the top. All right. The Eagles win. They improved to 5-1. and one. After six games now, have we changed the perception of this Eagles team? We have. I vote every week in the in the ESPN power rankings, and the way the system works is it asks you, <clears throat> it gives you two options of you know this team versus this team. You have to pick who you think is going to win, and the system figures out percentage wise. Okay, here's the teams that are ranking at the highest, 
And early in the season, it would be if I saw the Eagles against certain teams, I'd say, okay, I'm going to pick the other team versus the Eagles. Now at this point, if I'm looking at, okay, who am I going to pick in that setup? I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to pick the Eagles over probably just about everybody except for maybe Kansas City. That would be about the only team I would say maybe, and Kansas City got the win against them earlier. And I, that's probably about the only team I, I would think. I could get them at second or third because they've got the kind of team that matches up well against anybody. All right, uh, let's look at some of the matchups this week as the Eagles improved to 5-1 and one here locally. Uh, but there's a lot of interesting matchups without them on Sunday. Let's dive into some of the matchups and get a quick take from Casey on the games. Miami's heading to Atlanta. Atlanta, uh, I guess right now, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Green Bay uh, at the top of that NFC. How do you like Atlanta at home? I like Atlanta do well in this game. Miami's run defense knows them really good, so I'm curious if Atlanta's going to be able to throw the ball more because that's not something they want to do. They've been more of a run-first team, but Miami is limited as their offense, so I think Atlanta wins that pretty handily. Uh, got Green Bay. We just talked about them going on the road, though, to Minnesota. It looks like it's going to be Keenum again, but can Green Bay go on the road and win for the second straight week? I think they can. Minnesota's defense is very good, but again, Chicago fared fairly well, and Green Bay can do a lot better. And Keenum, as well as he is at some, time, you know, some of the things he does, I just think he's too risk-taking of a quarterback. So I think he makes a turnover, loses that game for the Vikings. Detroit needs to get back on track, but the Saints have been quietly playing some good defense. They have. Detroit's problem, though, is again when they played Carolina, they had to send somebody, uh, an extra guy, in to stop the run. New Orleans has. Uh, between Ingram and Camaro, they've got the making to a really good running game, and I just don't think Detroit's going to really handle that. New England and New York, who knew this would be for first place? <laughs> yeah, who thought the Jets would be doing this? New England's running game is starting to get better. Their, pass, their run blocking is getting out better. They're going to need it because you know, Brady's got the injury, and I think it's going to make them maybe lean in him a little bit less. I just don't think the Jets have enough firepower to win this one, though. By the way, over 5, uh, 4,900 tickets still available for that game. It's the most available tickets in the league. No one wants to see wow. the Patriots come to town. Uh, San Francisco is at Washington. I guess the Eagle fans should keep an eye on the Redskins because they'll play them on Monday night, but that could be their biggest challenger in the NFC East with that Ezekiel Elliott news. Yeah, it could be, and, and Washington, they, uh, I wanna, I'm i curious to see how much they're going to use Chris Thompson because Rob Kelly's probably out, and Samaji Ryan's not very good. He's not the kind of play back you can lean on, but they don't want to lean on Thompson, so I think I want to see if they're going to take a short-term approach or say we need Thompson to be a long-term guy, So, but I still think they win that one pretty handily. All right, we got Chicago uh, with the new quarterback, obviously Trubisky, going to Baltimore. Baltimore's one of those teams that's really tough to read. They are, and their run defense is not very good. So, but I have a feeling that they'll put an extra guy on the box a lot and make Trubisky do a lot. You know, try and put a lot of pressure on him. Trubisky, by the way, looked really good in the Monday Night game. Mobile, accurate. He showed some of the things. He's going to be a good quarterback down the road, but he's not going to win his you know, first road game at Baltimore. All right, uh, let's move on to Cleveland at Houston. Houston lost a couple of key defenders. Is that enough to get slipped up at home against Cleveland? The thing is, Cleveland's got a really good run defense. Houston's missing uh, some of their defenders, and Houston's, uh, uh, that, that's going to be some problems for them. But Houston's just got so much firepower on offense, and I just don't think Cleveland's you – know, Hogan is taking over. I like Hogan as a potential good quarterback down the road, but I don't think he can win this one. All right, uh, Tampa, uh, a lot of people like them coming into the year. They're going to as an Arizona team that's all sorts of issues. they got Adrian Peterson now, but no real offensive line. Can Tampa, though, go on the road and beat the Cardinals? They will make Arizona the most one-dimensional team this week because Tampa Bay has the best good blocking rate allowed in the league. Their defense is that good against the run. Peterson gets nothing done in Arizona. is going to be one-dimensional, and that's not a place you want to be against Tampa. Rams score a lot of points. They didn't last week. Jacksonville is so weak to week. They're at home, though. Can the Jags make it two in a row? The thing is, is the Jags have that shutdown pass defense, but last week said as much about uh, uh, Ben Roethlisberger not being able to throw long passes, whether you blitz him or not, than it does anything else. I think the Rams aren't going to try and throw the ball. They're going to try and run the ball, and they've got the best run blocking league. So I think Jacksonville wins, but I won't be shocked if the Rams pull an upset. All right, uh, the game you'll hear right here on 97.3 ESPN. Pittsburgh goes to Kansas City. Is this the week the Chiefs stub their toe? They're starting to get banged up. They got Kelsey is a questionable, and uh, Hill is questionable, and they lost Chris Conley last week. They're starting to become a one-dimensional team, and Pittsburgh's got a really good pass defense. So this is going to be a situation where can Kansas City's running game beat Pittsburgh's running game? I think they win because they're at home, but Kansas City's going to start showing some weaknesses and them get healthy. All right, uh, it is the Chargers going to Oakland, and the Raiders look like they're going to get Carr back. They've uh, lost a couple of here uh, games without him. Can they get back on track with Carr possibly under center? 
we saw what happened when Philadelphia's offensive line faced the Chargers' defensive front. You don't want to pass block against those guys, but you can run block really well. Oakland's been getting better in run blocking, and I think this game they're going to lean heavily on the run. I think it's going to be the difference for them. Okay, and uh, the winless Giants have all sorts of issues. They're in prime time again against a real good defensive team. This could be a game where New York struggles to score. Yeah, New York, uh, their run blocking last week was the best they've had all season, so it's trending upward for them long term. But Denver's number one in the league in good blocking rate, good blocking allowed, good blocking productivity, yards before first defensive contact, and that's before thinking about how good their pass rush and secondary is. I think they could shut off the Giants. Monday night, we've got Colts in Tennessee, an AFC South battle here. Do the Titans get back on track, or do the Colts keep themselves relevant in the South? I think the Colts could uh, could definitely keep this game close, even though they're not going to have luck. But the thing about the Titans is when you look at their run blocking, their run, advanced run blocking metrics are still really good. They're in the top five in good blocking rate, uh, good blocking productivity, yards before first defensive contact. So they're still able to run the ball, and the Colts can't stop the run. So I think the Titans pull that one out. Good week of football here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. Breaking it down with Casey Joyner. We'll be back on Monday to recap all of the action. And uh, obviously with the Eagles with the W, um, it feels good on a Friday here. A lot of fans juiced up about this team. We'll see what the weekend brings. Uh, two NFC East teams in action. Dallas has the bye. And we'll be breaking it all down on Monday's show. Enjoy the football this weekend, Casey. Thank you, my friend.